I'm a longtime fan of real world. Um, New Orleans was, you know, it hit when I was 17. So it is easily my favorite season. Um, <laughs> you are great you so on the original. Thank you so much for having me. You know, as one of the gays, we all love Danny back in the day, still love him now. You, but just you do. how weird is it for you just to, you know, be back doing press again, just doing something like this? Actually, what's so funny is in all of the years of having been Melissa from the real world, the most I ever feel like a celebrity is when I'm doing press, to be honest. <laughs> like, not a red carpet, not an invitation to something. It's actually doing press where I have to like get zipped up and like say the right things and, you know, use my media <laughs> training. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, we'll, we'll get into some of the specifics of, of the return because I've seen the first couple episodes in a second. But just in general, what were your concerns, if any, about, you know, agreeing to do Homecoming in the first place, especially after being away from reality TV for so long? Yeah, you know, what happens after the show is 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 you you get into the grind and you chase the dream because the opportunities are presented to you to try out for things and 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 become a bigger version of your real world self. But then, you know, you hunker down and have a private life. So, I've been over here minding my business, drinking my water. I got kids, I got a husband, I got a mortgage. So, when the opportunity presented <laughs> itself, it was it was both uh, flattering and daunting at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. But ultimately it ended up being a great decision because uh, I, I have loved reconnecting with everybody. We had lost touch for many, many years. So it was really cool to be yeah. able to reconnect. And now for me, you know, I rewatched all the original episodes before diving into the first two of the revival. Um, it was very interesting just to kind of revisit 2000 or 1999, whatever year you actually filmed. But it, it's kind of unfortunate that a lot of the conversations you guys had back then about race, about sexuality, the country is still struggling with like more than ever right now. It's like you kind of would hope that things would have gotten better, but that isn't necessarily the case. Just, I guess for you personally, how disheartening is it? And, and to still be in this role where you kind of do have to educate the white housemates. Um. You know, I think that now this time around, it's it's it it was uh, met with less uh, anxiety only because we have we are living in the Internet age. We have every piece yeah. of information we could possibly want to know about at our fingertips. And so I feel like, you know, if there's something you want to know about, you don't have to go into a microfiche or get to the library to find out about it. You can just yeah. doop, Google is your friend. So uh, I didn't I didn't go into this one kind of nervous about that. I if that was a topic, I did feel like um, I was assured by producers going in that I wasn't going to be um, put in a position where I would be doing all of that emotional labor. So uh, I really went I really went into this experience um, hopeful and uh, appreciative and excited about you know, reconnecting with old uh, roommates because, you know, I think about the show like this. When I said I was going to do it, I said, I got to go do it. I got to be present and I got to be authentic and I got to enjoy it for what it is because mm. now I know things and now I know better. And, you know, when you know better, you do better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and what what a great opportunity to to see people who the only people in the world who could know what that experience felt like. So yeah, I felt good going into it. I mean, nervous. And now, <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be nervous, you know, going back for like a high school reunion, let alone something that's going to be filmed with people you haven't talked to for years and years and years. So I can only imagine. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> while I was watching it back, obviously the episode, one of the episodes that sticks out the most is when you are on the Swamp Boat tour, just the reaction you got from, some people for this this tour guide dropping the n-word i saw another another interview you did where you said you even got hate mail at the time based yeah. on your reaction to something that is completely valid and it's it's i guess what was that experience like for you at the time after the show had aired um yeah the n-word incident Woo, how that thing lived on um yeah. i think that as a young person living inside of that, I was genuinely hurt and upset that my roommates weren't as hurt and upset as I was. 
And then yeah. the show aired on national television and the world was not as hurt or upset as I was. So I was like, oh, so their reaction was the normal one and I'm crazy. So there was yeah. a little bit of, um, you know, adjusting to that. And, and I knew going into, because I had also watched Real World Homecoming New York and Real World Homecoming LA that, you know, there are pieces of each franchise where you know those stories are going to have to be revisited. So I went in understanding yeah. we were going to do that. Um, so I feel like in a weird way, in 2000, I went into that experience not knowing what to expect. And then in 2022, mm. I again did not know what to expect, but I arrived as a full and whole adult with a little bit of wisdom, a little bit, a teeny bit of wisdom. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I, I feel like you're going to have to watch to see how that plays out. But I feel yeah. like it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a nice uh, little closure with a bow, how that turns out. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I know one of the things you do kind of you do bring up just in the first episode of the revival is that you wish you had done more with your platform after the show. I'm just curious what maybe you think you would have done differently if you did have a second chance, I guess, back then. <laughs> Hold on a second. Is that what I said? Which I thought so. I, I thought. <laughs> Okay, if that's I'm not the case, this... we could skip to the next question. <laughs> I don't remember. Did I say wish I, you know, um, well, in terms of platform, in ter I will say this, in terms of platform, you're on that show as a very young person, given opportunities yeah. that you would have never had, um, you know, prior to being on MTV. Um, I took that very seriously. And I, I, I felt like I, I was in the grind for about four or five years. Um, but also it's one of those things where uh, the real world gives you visibility and notoriety at the same time. So you would yeah. be taking meetings and they'd be going great. And everybody thinks you're so funny and you're so cool. And wow, you're just like you. And then you don't get the job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, after a while, of, after a lot of that, I just was like, it's time for me to step away and kind of figure out who I am not as Melissa from the real world. And um, I found her. She's a nice stay at home mom from Long Island. So <laughs> happy to hear that. <laughs> and, you know, I guess part of this grind after the show, you know, we do need to address the Julie of it all, because even anyone who watched the challenge knows that you two came into this with some history that clearly needed to be addressed. Um, yeah. Were you surprised that it happened immediately? Like it's night one. And you three, you, Julie, Danny, are already just, are you happy you got it out of the way, I guess, right at the top of things? Listen, let me run the tape back. I feel like I addressed it fully in yes. Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and then, you know, I this watched back that episode the... back too. And I was like, oh yeah, no, <laughs> she said all this back then. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, and you know, this was back in the day when they had the, the blog and you can go on MTV and you could air out your side of the story. So I feel like I did it on TV. And then I also did it in, in an online form, which I'm sure exists somewhere in a Wayback machine. Um, so I didn't have any trepidation going in because I, I, I didn't do nothing wrong to that lady. So I came into the house, like, I mean, if she's ready to address it, she can, if she wants, but you know, the onus wasn't really on me. So I wasn't really tripping about that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I guess, how did it coming up night one, day two, kind of affect the rest of the, the trip overall? I know it is two weeks. Does it help put it in a, in a better place because you can kind of coexist a little easier or? <laughs> Listen, it was, it, even outside of that, it was a highly charged and interesting and therapeutic and restorative yeah and crazy two weeks, any way you slice it. Because we're talking about seven different personalities who have all gone on to become adults who have all processed their original real world experience in whatever ways they did. So um, I think even outside of that particular interpersonal dynamic that I had with her, the show itself and living there for two, I mean, who does co-ed living when you're married? That's so weird. No. Um, <laughs> um, Unless you're on you some know, weird it, group vacation, but even then yeah, and, you're and not sharing doing rooms. That? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was a very interesting introduction. Um, it was a very interesting element of that experiment. It, 
I mean, you saw it. it it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I think, yeah, it'll have people talking. I have our recap ready to go. And I think it'll oh, be no, a, not Brian a good one for fab. us. Brian at 2Fab said, oh, yeah, baby, we recap in this one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and, you know, now that this, you know, you are a few months removed from filming everything, has communication between you and maybe cast members you weren't that close with, has it gotten better? I, I assume now that you all are doing press, that helps. But I guess in between, yeah. uh, is Listen. there a text chain that you all are on or something like that now? Oh, not the group <laughs> chat. Um, <laughs> Listen, I, I I say this and I've said it in, in other interviews. One of the best parts of going back, even though it was wrought with anxiety, is that I now have a direct connection to the only people in the world who could understand what this experience is like. And I have truly fostered friendships and Danny and I were just in the city um, the other day together eating a plate of ribs so you know <laughs> I didn't have that before and you know I'm, yeah. I'm I, I bought his daughter calico critters like you know we have a really great and sweet uh, many of us have a really great and sweet relationship as a result of reconnecting in this space so truly I I appreciate the opportunity thanks Paramount plus <laughs> <laughs> and you know you guys are all thrown back together you're starting to hear how everyone's interpretation or perspective of the original show was you know I talked to Danny a few years ago and he was just talking about all the PTSD he experienced after the fact which was surprising to me as a viewer as someone who was part of that fan wave of just you know seeing happy to see representation and piling on I guess as it were but whose I guess perspective really did surprise you the most um, wow. You know, everybody dealt with it in a very different way based on, um, how they were perceived after the show, you know? Mm. So, yeah. you know, some of us were able to just move on and it, and it wasn't a thing. Others of us, you know, Danny was unable, literally unable to go to the supermarket. So, yeah. um, it was interesting seeing that different perspective. Um, I will say we're all still very, very much who we were then. I know that sounds so crazy, but like, <laughs> I, I, let me explain it like this. I have friends who I have in my real life, my very real life, who know me, who don't think of me as Melissa from the real world. And all of them, uh, since Paramount started streaming the old uh, series yesterday, <laughs> have called yeah. me and told on themselves because I've established a boundary. Like, yes, I'm a lizard from the real world, but here, me and you, that's not happening. Um, so they've all <laughs> called me and told on themselves and been like, Melissa, I'm watching it. Please don't be mad. But they've all said, <laughs> it's really weird. It's like reading your diary from a time mm, when I didn't I'm know sure. you. So um, right? <laughs> they're like, it's like, I know you, but I don't know you. And they're like, I like it, but I don't like it. Um, so... Uh, I guess it might feel that way. It's so hard to explain this to people. I guess it might feel that way to you, the viewing audience too, you know, because yeah. when you watched it, it was your formative years. Something about that show was special mm -hmm. to you. And so it was important yeah. for me to, to come back into this, this process and respect how it belonged to you, how it, ex how it belonged to like the end user. Um, because, you know, you don't want people to walk away from it and being like, dang, I really like that lady. And now look at her. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you especially will have that issue because everyone okay. I think is even the trailer alone they're like narrator Melissa is back <laughs> she's given us what oh. we need oh my belligerence gosh, has arrived so <laughs> belligerence has arrived by my tote bag um no I, <laughs> that's so funny you say that because um I didn't realize when I was 22 that I was in like a narrator role but like now that I'm an adult and I also watch a lot of reality tv you start to understand yeah. who the narrators are. And I was like, wow, I was doing that before I knew that was a thing. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I got to just say, one of my favorite episodes, my partner and I, we are obsessed with the Mardi Gras episode. We literally throw it like clips of it on TV when we have people over. <laughs> but oh just my like goodness. the fact there's, you know, Anne Rice cameo, a random girl waiting for her friend to stop hooking up with David on the computer, like oh naked Danny gosh, and one of the best confessional moments with you and Julie, just kind of breaking down the insanity that's going on. <laughs> oh my just God. love that, that episode. Is, is there anything specifically about Mardi Gras from back then that, that really does stand out now? 
that is a warm and fuzzy episode actually like uh, honestly between that uh where i'm like uh, matt is praying for his life david is servicing the hose like what what was i talking about who are you melissa um between that and come on be my baby tonight um and those Absolutely. being like sort of like the the highlights of real world new orleans um and if that's your takeaway i'm like really excited like the fact that you are playing me in the background of a party me <laughs> in my 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 pre-dental phase like that's awesome i'm, I'm like genuinely appreciative of that <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for giving it to us and lastly <laughs> i just want to ask you know we talked to beth s when she was doing press for homecoming she kind of threw out the idea that she wants MTV to do maybe an all-stars version of real world if they get to a point where you can't get whole cast back together. You know, they're doing wow. it with the challenge. Is that something you might be interested in? And who maybe would you like to maybe spend more time with if given the chance? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I, I <laughs> love being at home. Look around. This is a lovely- right? It's a great I, home. I, I, have, <laughs> I love being in here. And plus it's a pandemic. You, you're gonna have to pay me a lot of money to go back outside. So, I mean, if they do it, you know, they do have my number. We can hash it out, Absolutely. but ooh, yikes. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> well, Melissa, thank you. Thank you so much. It is a pleasure thank to you. meet you. Like I said, long thank time. Thank you. You as season, well. So. Thank good you luck so with much, everything. Brian. Thank you. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. You as well. <laughs>